This is a follow-up to my tutorial on class-based kerning um, because I forgot to mention um, how to actually make the class-based kerning work, uh, which is obviously very important. So um, the thing I forgot to mention is now I've just set up a document here uh, just to illustrate it once more. Um, I've set up the class-based kerning here as you can see. So what you want to remember to do is to actually generate the kerning feature, um, the open type uh, kerning feature. So you go into the open type panel once you've done your class-based kerning and you click up here and go to generate current feature. That's going to take analyze the, the class-based kerning values from your uh, from your kerning here and just make make it into an open type feature. It's important that you click compile um, which just sort of activates this piece of code. And now when you go into the preview panel you can see that it's actually made this current feature under the open type features uh, tab up here. So you can actually test uh, test to see whether the cl class based kerning works. And in this case, it, it, it works. You can, you can turn the kerning feature on and off to see uh, what effect that open type feature has. So that's uh, one very important detail that I forgot to mention. And it works like this. Every time you, let's say I want to have more distance right there. Every time you change your class-based kerning, you have to go inside your open type and generate the current feature once again and just click OK to this dialog here. Um, you can see it changed the value here and then hit compile again. <clears throat> so that's basically just you just have to update your code every time you make a change to your class-based kerning.